fellows meet, like you and I. No connection between them whatsoever. Each one has somebody that he'd like to get rid of. So, they swap murders. Fantastic, isn't it? You didn't know when Bruno proposed this pact that he was serious. Dead serious. You had made the mistake of speaking to a stranger on a train. And now, wherever you go, whatever you do, you find yourself dominated by his evil presence. And you, Bruno, to you, killing was the answer. Murder without clue, without motive. The perfect crime. Too perfect. And Anne, life looked very attractive to you until the love in your heart became gripped by a terror that drew you deeper and deeper into this vortex of conspiracy. I have a murder on my conscience, but it's not my murder, Mr. Haynes. I wonder if you know how much I love you. Brazen woman, I'm the one to say that. Hello, welcome to Movie Umpers. My name is Bob Sham. Hello, my name is Angela. The sounds here may be dogs, and this month, movies are gay. Or we are revisiting last year's uh, full-on theme. Our first full-month theme mm-hmm. was movies are gay, and this will probably be a regular annual excursion. Absolutely. Discussing gay-ass movies. For our classic selections, it's all about subtext, of course. We are back on the Alfred Hitchcock tip. He was married. But there was a lot of alleds. Well, a lot of alleds back then. He himself said that if he hadn't met and married that exact woman, Vera, I think Alma Reva, she was pretty much the only woman. We're talking about Alfred Hitchcock's uh, gay ass movie, Strangers on a Train from 1951. So it's a screenplay by Raymond Chandler, Zinzi Ormond, adapted by Whitfield Cook, and based upon a novel by Patricia Highsmith. And it stars Farley Granger, one of my favorites. He was, Same. by the end of Farley Granger's life, he was fully committed to men. And also starring Robert Walker, Ruth Roman, and Patricia Hitchcock. Patricia Hitchcock is Alfred's daughter. They're his only child. She played Barbara. Strangers on a Train. Now, the co-star here, Robert Walker, uh, Farley Granger's character, he meets a fellow, his name is Guy Haynes, and he meets a fellow by the name of Bruno Anthony on a train. And they meet when they bump feet on the train. Like, it's almost like a little signal there. It is, but also Bruno knows everything about him. Mm. He saw him and made that happen. The most coded aspect of the movie, I believe, is all in this opening train yes. scene. yes. Antagonist Bruno Anthony is played by Robert Walker. It never left my mind that this character was gay. Absolutely. He's a gay antagonist. I looked up about Robert Walker. I didn't see anything that would signify that he had any other levels to his sexuality. He was married. He actually suffered from psychological disorders and was diagnosed a couple of years before this movie came out. Before the movie. And actually passed away the same year this movie came out. He had some troubles, but the only clue that maybe, maybe he was gay is that he was Mormon. It's the only clue. Well, that clue. just means he would have repressed. It's interesting that you say that he had mental issues in real life because he really comes across as someone in this movie who also does. He 
has all the tales of the time. He lives with his parents. He's best friend with his mother. Mm. He dresses very sharply, right? He does do Likes more men. of the yes. He does more of the trying <laughs> he to likes connect Farley Granger. with Farley Granger. Yeah, he's obviously over interested in this person already. I beg your pardon. Aren't you Guy Haynes? Oh, sure. I saw you blast Faraday right off the court in South Orange last season. Made the semifinals, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, I certainly admire people who do things. By the way, my name is Bruno. Bruno Anthony. So he's a he's a famous person. He is famous, just yeah. casually on a train, and I guess that is what you could think. Why maybe he wouldn't be he'd be so nonplussed at this guy knowing information about him. He's a tennis star. He's not quite full top, but he's like on the come up. And if you're a fan of the sport, yes. you would know who he is. And in that region, he's been in society column stuff. Yeah. So if you're looking at newspapers from the area, because he's from a city close to where Bruno lives. You see, sometimes I turn the sports page and I see the uh, society section. And the pictures. She's very beautiful. Senator Morton's daughter, huh? You're quite a reader, Mr. Anthony. <laughs> yes, I am. Ask me anything. I got the answer. Even news about people I don't know. Like, uh, who would like to marry whom when his wife gets her divorce? He's having an extramarital affair, which usually isn't... Um, the world gets bent quite a bit under the Hayes Code. But that's usually a hot and fast rule. But it's different when the person you're married to is two-timing on you constantly. Yes. And he has a wife that he wants to divorce, but she is constantly cheating on him. Constantly. Well, this- and everyone seems to know this. And he's in an affair with a senator's daughter, which everyone else also seems to know. When he goes to see the wife to sign the papers, she's decided she doesn't want to divorce him. She wanted to divorce him originally. So their marriage was essentially over and she was going around with other guys, which she continues to do throughout this movie. Mm -hmm. And so he said, fine, I'll give you the divorce. He gets in this relationship with this lovely young woman who you still assume they're not having sex. Right, sure. Because she lives with her parents and her little sister's always around. And the little sister makes this announcement at some point when the wife is gone that... Oh, you two can get married now. Like, they've been waiting <laughs> to can, get married so they can F-U-C-K. The barber character has a little lisp. Miriam went there with two boys. They're the ones who found it, so they're not suspects, but you probably will be. Young lady, there's no overlooking the fact that murder is at our doorstep, but I wish you wouldn't drag it into the living room. Let's not fool ourselves. The police will say Guy wanted Miriam out of the way so he could marry Anne. The crime of this sort, the police first go after the husband anyway, Guy had every motive. When I was watching this, I was like, is she like a stand-in for Alfred? And then it re- turned out it was his actual daughter. But She was so interesting to me. I loved the way she played that role. She was... She's the true the crime same fan. Time, yeah, she was at the same time the nosy little sister and the true crime girl, but also old enough to be flirty with the policeman. The role that I personally felt like I never gave two shits about in this movie is the one by Ruth Roman, the senator's daughter. I felt like that character was oh, his girlfriend. very much uninteresting. The whole family except her seemed kind of interesting to me. Yes. But the father we've seen in something else before, he's sort of just that classic father from these kind and of movies. And Ruth Roman actually has a higher billing than Robert Walker when when you take in this whole movie and see who's who's carrying the most intensity, sure. the most energy throughout this movie, it is Robert Walker. And in yes. my mind, he's Farley Granger is the lead, but in my mind Robert Walker kind of rises above everyone. Let's get back to this train. The, yes. The, they are strangers on a train. And Bruno, he's got the a, a tie clip with his name on it that his parents gave him. His mother. his He and his father do not get along. So they're having a casual conversation and Bruno sweeps him in with all the gossip that he's at the center of. And he's playing it candidly. And then he says... Want to hear one of my ideas 
for a perfect murder. You want to hear the busted light socket in the bathroom or the uh, carbon monoxide in the garage? Neither one. I, I may be old-fashioned, but I thought murder was against the law. <laughs> what is a life for two guys? Some people are better off dead. Like your wife and my father, for instance. Oh, that reminds me of a wonderful idea I had once. If we, if I killed your wife and you killed my father, we have no connection to the people we would be killing. There would be it would no be reason. the perfect crime. There's no motives on our part, the yeah. killers. If we switched our problems and just took care of this. He and keeps calling it swapping murders. It's awkward, but he's laughing it off like, yeah, sure, buddy. And then yeah, they, it's a when, joke. When they get up to separate, there's a part where Bruno says to him, Crisscross. What? Oh, we do talk the same language, don't we? Well, sure, Bruno, we talk the same language. Thanks for the lunch. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I thought the lamb chops were a little overdone myself. Nice meeting you. Now, you think my theory's okay, guy? Uh, you like it? Sure, Bruno, sure. They're all okay. Bruno reads it as we're on exactly the same page and we are going to do this also. They have been using Guy's lighter that actually says A to G mm. or A with like an arrow, I think. And it's got the tennis rackets on it. So it's very obviously Guy's lighter, but he accidentally leaves it. And Bruno starts to call him and then decides, oh, no, I'm going to keep this. So now Bruno does have a thing that belongs to Guy. So right there, that's already a problem. So they go to, I think, Metcalf. Guy asks for, formally asks for the divorce from his wife, who's like this minx lady in these like thick glasses. And she's... she's Pregnant from another man. Yeah, she's kind of hot, too. And she works in a record store. She's very hot. But she's pretty cold. She's pretty... She's fatale. She's very fatale. Yeah, she basically says, I don't want the divorce anymore. I'm going to Washington with you, and I am going to be your wife, and this is going to be your baby. Or I'm going to tell everyone that you left me pregnant and alone for another woman when she's the harlot. He takes off. He doesn't get what he wants. And it's all harder. And he goes back to the senator's daughter. And the senator knows this whole rigmarole, rigmarole. And it's kind of surprising that the senator isn't just like, why don't you separate for a while until all of this blows over? Yeah, right? Because it seems like a more trouble than it's worth. But Bruno tracks down his wife and Metcalf. And she's at a carnival or a fair or something. With two uh, guys. With two guys. He makes eye contact with her, and she's not turned off by him. Like she, she's like flirty. She's like into the fact that this guy's focused on her. Mm -hmm. She has no idea. So they go through the tunnel of love, and it's this these drawn out creeper scenes of Bruno just stalking and stalking until finally he catches her in some shrubs, and he strangles her to death. There's, and takes her glasses as evidence. Yes. He strangles her to death, takes her glasses. He drops the lighter, but then he picks it up at this moment. There is also a moment in the Tunnel of Love. This is weird. And I never, I've known of like a Tunnel of Love as a ride. But this was, you get a boat, you go through the Tunnel of Love, and then you go to like an island where you basically make out. And then you get back on the boat and come back. Like they Is had, he had to get back on the boat those, to get away from those her. Those were those were makeout islands. I think so. I, I think mean, you I think might that's be what reading a little doing. deep into that. I think you were supposed to do all the making out in the dark tunnel. Maybe the tunnel was not that long, if you recall. <laughs> they were in the tunnel for a second, but there's a brilliant moment where both boats have gone into the tunnel, and you're looking at the exit that's all black, and she screams. Yeah. But then she starts laughing. But there's a beat. Like, it's such a good tension, moment where you're like, yeah, oh, course, God, did yeah. he do something in the tunnel? It's so good. He's going back to, I believe, his own house, Guy is. And Bruno is across the street and starts yelling for him, like, Guy, Guy. And Guy goes across the street. They're talking in the shadows in the alley. Bruno says to him, I did yours. Now you do mine. We need to have a plan. And he gives him his wife's broken glasses. In that moment, Guy says, you are absolutely insane. And Bruno says, we made this plan. And you can't tell anybody I did this because if you do, I'm going to say we planned this together. 
now you have now he has the glasses. Didn't even talk about that. He now has evidence of her being dead. But and, and this is what prevents Guy from going to the police immediately for a, a while throughout the movie because he's afraid because it really sounds. Oh, also when he was pissed at his wife for not giving him the divorce, he actually called his girlfriend and yelled over a train really loudly. I would just strangle her. Right. So. It, just bad timing, but also very Hitchcock in that he said the exact thing that happened. So there's all this stuff to make a real strong case against him. It does kind of make sense that he would get wrapped up in it like this because mm-hmm. I still might have went to the police. Legally, it's hard to make a case in some respect. The court of public opinion, because you're dating a senator's daughter mm-hmm. and you're a quasi-famous celebrity... Mm-hmm. The court of public opinion is going to eat this up. Like, this could end up being some major news. I would not have gone to the police. I would have gone to the senator. But then again, she's going to wind up dead. She's. It's got to be in the obituaries. It's going to be reported. No matter well, what. Well, everyone knows she's dead. They just don't know who killed her. This uh, rising tennis star's wife is dead. That's oh, yeah. still uh, That's still news. Well, and even Barbara saying, and now you can get married. You can't get married immediately. You're going to have to wait because, again, it's news that your wife is dead. And then you, if you get married right away, the whole thing is is bad news. So he also plans to be a politician. Bruno still wants to goad him into killing his father. He's yes. like, you're in this now, so why don't you do He's mine? He's him. He's sort of stalking him. Yeah. And there's a one point where he's at a tennis tournament, and this tennis scene is pretty great. And it's going back and forth, and, it, and the tension builds. And you look in the crowd, and you see everyone's face everyone's following heads. the ball. But there's one man in the center, and the camera zooms in, who's not moving his head. He's just looking straight on. Did you put on. the picture up? And, yeah, it's a great shot. Robert Robert Walker fucking kills in this movie. Mm-hmm. He is the best. As much as I love Farley Granger... He's the shiniest one in this movie, no doubt. We do also get a scene with him and his mom early on that really tells a lot about him also. You know, he is, his mom's doing his nails and he's in this very fancy house coat. She says to him, did I do a good job? And he talks about how he likes his nails to be so perfect. Oh, but you have that look, dear. I always can tell. Now, you haven't been doing anything foolish. Well, I do hope you've forgotten all about that silly little plan of yours. Which one? (laughs) About um, blowing up the White House. Oh, Ma, I was only fooling. Besides, what would the president say? (laughs) She starts telling him, your dad's going to be home soon. And as soon as she mentions his dad, he is a grown-ass man, probably 40, still living at home, who starts acting like a teenager at the mention of his father, Mm -hmm. who comes in and really isn't even that mean, but they both act like his dad is being mean to him. The mom's like, don't use that tone with him. But all he said was like, I need to talk to you. You're right. We don't see that much harshness from the dad. We don't see any harshness. Well, we barely see the dad, truly. He He's, oh, the other thing is the dad is really rich, And Bruno refuses to work. He's living on his dad's money. And he does this thing at the beginning where he talks about how he loves Guy because Guy does things. He wants to be someone who does things. And so what he does is a murder. Well, the time comes where Guy has to figure something out. And through his girlfriend and uh, and Barbara, who's really into all this shit, they kind of have a plan. Uh, Mm -hmm. tell, Tell us what the plan is. So... Once it all comes to a head and his girlfriend figured it out, so they get this plan where he's got this one more tennis tournament that he has to do. He's being watched. He's got a cop with him all the time. So while he's playing tennis, the sister says to Barbara, take this money and go get a cab and take it around to the exit, also with these dress pants, leave them in the cab and have the cab wait convoluted, yeah. until the match is over. Mm. And so the plan is that the second the match is over, and he does do this, Farley Granger puts on his tennis jacket and he goes and gets in the cab and he puts on the pants and the cabbie takes him to where his wife was murdered because Bruno has told him that he is going to, he told her that the lighter was where the woman died. It wasn't. He was going to plant it. Mm-hmm. So Guy is trying to get 
out of this tennis tournament, which makes it very tense because he needs to, to win. Back to Metcalf before Bruno, Bruno plants the lighter. And Bruno runs into a couple of issues that makes it take him longer to get there too. So they both arrive at the carnival at the same time. And there was one man who noticed Bruno acting really weird the night of the murder. And I love how the whole carnival figuring everything out thing plays out, aside from the one thing that's truly insane. They're both chasing each other around, and the cops are also chasing them, because the cops definitely think that Guy killed his wife at this point. But then, the man who works at the Tunnel of Love says, oh no, that's the guy I saw that night, but the cops still don't know who he's pointing at. And at this time, Farley Granger, Guy, and Bruno have gotten onto a carousel yeah. and are fighting on the carousel. There's kids, there's girls, boys, whatever. Something happens on the carousel that for- causes it. The cop tries to shoot Guy and instead shoots the operator of the carousel right. who falls on the, the, the lever. Controls. Now there's and a why do they have a super speed? Yeah, there's a design flaw with this carousel here. It's just spinning. It's spinning so incredibly fast. And it's like spinning like a top. Like and it's it, going. It, this scene is so fun. It, there's like girls screaming for their lives. And, and the then, kids having a and great time. And there's little kids having a great time. And uh, Farley Granger and Robert Walker are having a, a struggle to get this lighter or whatever on this on the lighter, carousel. Yeah. You got to give it to Hitchcock. He successfully makes a carousel look extremely dangerous. Yes. It looks like one of the horse's hooves that come up and down might crush your head or go through your eye. I really and, thought someone was going to get... And then there's one point where he's hanging off the carousel and Robert Walker's like... Smashing his, his foot legs and are kicking just him. Hanging off. The tension. I, I mean, that's Hitchcock's bread and butter. And then this little old man walks up. Get someone to stop this thing. I can handle it. Hey, be careful! Stop. Well, do you want to do it yourself? No, I guess he can make it all right. This takes five minutes. There's one point where he's halfway to the controls. He's like, I can do this. And he stops and he wipes his face off. Just the way it drags out. The tension build. It's really good, but also very funny. It makes sense that he would take some time. Because if he raises up too far, he's losing his head. Yeah. He could die under there. So I get that. But it wasn't even that. It wasn't that he was taking his time. He was nonchalant about it. He stopped and ate dinner while he was down there on his way to <laughs> yeah. turning off puts the carousel. On like a, puts on a napkin around his neck. But he does turn off the carousel and dude gets thrown off the carousel and it's life-threatening injuries. Yes. Bruno's which going is funny. to die. Farley Granger standing over him is like, tell him you did it. Just tell him. Just tell him. How many times have we seen this scene? Give me the lighter. Give me the lighter. And you do think it's going to end up that he's going to take the fall for all this shit I anyway. So. But then after Bruno dies, his hand opens and there's the lighter. And the chief of police, the constable or whatever, he's like, oh, well, I guess he really did do it. There's that lighter. Have a good night, sir. <laughs> So that little bit of tension at the end where you think Farley's going to go down for the crime was immediately just tossed away once the... It would have been funny if Which he... Which really sucks. He should have lost the lighter I, in the scuffle. Like, and no been, one knows where it is. And then the last frame of the movie is it just laying on the ground Or some away little from kid them. sees it and yes. picks it up and walks away. I really, I really wanted something like that to happen because that's way more interesting. It's also like the time to just conveniently wrap it up in yeah. the nice way and, and make, you want him to be able and, to marry the girl and make sure he gets to be with the girl in holy matrimony in a Hayes code kind of way yeah. strangers on a train it's a it's a fun movie i like it yeah, me too there, it, it's not perfect i have some uh little small issues with it but i love robert walker's performance as bruno here mm-hmm. he really Seems like he has Farley Granger on his heels throughout this whole movie. To and he just has such a dominating role, one to remember, I think. But absolutely, we're gonna give this one through five each combined for best out of ten. I'm gonna give it a three point five. It's a solid three point five. Mm. I'm giving it a four. Actually, I'm gonna go up. 
I'm going to go up a point two five. Check it out at seven point seven five at an A minus. Strangers on a train is right between Jordan Peele's Nope. And the postman always rings twice. So That's a good one for it to be next to. Robert Walker's last performance. Or I think it's his last. He might have been in some. There might have been some post-production thing with him in it that came out. But, sure. Uh, he had passed away the same year this movie came out, which is pretty brutal. He did suffer from uh, serious mental illnesses. And you can't help but think that. Maybe that helped him in his role here. He's pretty much the reason this movie is an A. So there you go. That's it for our uh, classic selection for this week. And uh, we will get um, very gay, very 90s here on Wednesday. So stay tuned for that. Check the show notes for links, other places to find us. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment. We like it when you do that. And uh, we'll see you very soon. Movies are gay and so are you. Easy guy, I'm your friend, remember? I like you. Your wife, my father. Crisscross. What? Oh, we do talk the same language, don't we? Well, sure, Bruno, we talk the same language. Strangers are